Hey guys, welcome to Unleash Podcast, brought to you by Hidden Gene, where we talk about how to unleash your hidden potential. I'm your host, Yuri Diorgens, and we have a great episode for you today, featuring Stephen Pine. Thank you for being on, Steve. Absolutely, my pleasure. Well, before we jump into today's topics, we'd like to invite you to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. You can always find this podcast also on our Hidden Gen uh, website, hiddengen.net. And if you live in the area and you have not been at Hidden Gen, make sure to grab a free trial pass at hiddengen.net. All right, Steve, how are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you, Yuri? Amazing, amazing. Great day. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about fitness. Uh, talk a little bit more about your story. Uh, when it comes to uh, weightlifting, fitness, uh, how sure. everything started? Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> started a long time ago, long, long time ago when I was a little kid, actually. Wow! Uh, <laughs> just, just the desire, absolutely. I, I grew up. I was uh, always been a huge sports fan. Always played sports. Fitness is a big part of that. But I was a huge um, bodybuilding fan. I grew up in the Arnold Schwarzenegger era, um, where he was. He was king of the stage, obviously, yeah. and um, and WWF, and I watched it uh, religiously, <laughs> and I was I was always intrigued with just the fitness aspect of it um, and the physique aspect of it, and um, my parents would even tell you that um, I grew up posing, I grew up flexing, I spent a lot of time in the mirror trying to perfect my own personal appearance and so I think it was just ingrained in me from a from a young child and something that I gravitated to and I've continued to do so 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 uh, did, that's did you take this to the next level uh, when like on your I teenager did, years or it was later on even even a more interesting thing as much as I've loved it um, I did my first show on Memorial Day this year um, oh, I never wow. did compete. Really? Yeah, that took a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took a while. It did. Um, and you know, there's some there's some probably more silly reasons uh, to that. But I was I got into sports big time. I I played football in college and ran track, and um, and so that kind of took over that whole aspect. I always enjoyed the the weightlifting aspect of it though, um, and the the building of the body and the physique. And then after that, I got into a golf for just a little bit and um, just something different uh, to take a break, but quickly got back to the weight room and went more of the CrossFit route, Olympic weightlifting route. Um, just needed something to compete in. Yeah. Um, I did train for a bodybuilding competition, um, man, probably back in 2006 or so, but I pulled a hamstring, ended up not competing, and um, never really never really went back to it at mm -hmm. least from a bodybuilding standpoint until uh, I met Greg at Hidden Gym and uh, mentioned a desire to do it probably a few years ago and then he asked me uh, about 16 weeks before Memorial Day if I wanted to do it and so we just hit the ground running wow <laughs> so 16 weeks uh, yeah. uh, you stopped prepping yes and how yes, was the, how was the prep weeks. since it was your first one it was a journey I'll tell you that I didn't know what to expect um at all the food the diet um, the lifting aspect it's all different the posing was certainly a, uh, a new thing for me um, but I had some difficulties through I was great all the way until about three weeks out from the show Yuri and I actually developed gout three weeks out from the show mm. um, and uh, so it started in my feet and I thought it was just overuse to my hands and I had done back um, the day before, and I thought I just pulled too hard, pulled too much, overused, strained. Wow. Man, it kept spreading, uh, and it was in every joint in my body. And uh, I was swollen. I couldn't move. And it was it was actually pretty depressing, to be honest with you. Did you go and, to the doctor uh, to, to take a look at Well, I was on the verge of doing that, and I had, a, I guess, a revelation that uh, it could be diet-related. And so I took a stab at it being gout, and I cut out red meat and did some uric acid flushes. And about 24 hours later, I was able to walk and move, felt better. The swelling was still there. Um, and so ended up being that's what it was. Um, and uh, so I was able to get on stage. I was worried about it because I couldn't move. It. Uh, I would wake up about midnight and literally just 
rigor mortis. I couldn't move at all. And it would take me about 10 to 15 minutes just to stand up and get out of bed. And it was awful, excruciating pain. So <laughs> that's that's my first experience from well, a, from a and, uh, contest prep. That's crazy. And uh, yes. how did you come up to the conclusion that that was the problem? And uh, did you talk to someone that say, try this, or, or was just yes. you researching? Well, a lot of research. Um, which was awful too because I couldn't use my fingers and so I, I was on my phone using my thumbs like this um, but I had so much uh, mental fortitude to the fact that I was going to do this show that I kept working out even through it um, I would heat all the joints in my body so I could move them and I'd go work out and um, then I'd pay for it the rest of the day until I worked out again um, a little, little extreme, but that's just kind of how my mind works and how I operate. But I was up at up at the gym, and one of the trainers up there suggested, "Hey, you may want to look into diet related stuff because it it very well could be gout." Um, and so I took a stab, like I said, and it ended up being that's what it was. And uh, so I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for that trainer for mentioning it. But and and um, what you now that you've been through this, what do you believe you could have done to prevent this to happen in the first place? Sure, I I think there's a few things, and we're going to find out when I prep again. I'm doing another show in December. Um, but uh, the red meat every night is is what it was it's what caused it so as soon as i cut out the red meat um like i said 24 hours later i was i was good and clear and just needed to get rid of the swelling at that point so you, you did think, you replace the red meat for like chicken i replaced or the red meat i replaced the red meat uh with dark meat chicken chicken thighs um just so i could have the fat content um and from a macronutrient standpoint they're very similar there's obviously some things in red meat that uh Uh, dark meat chicken doesn't have that and salmon but um you know i in this bulking stage that we're in now just trying to put on some muscle um i've had red meat reluctantly when i first started but i've had it every evening for about three weeks now and i've not had an issue so maybe so it's there a combination a, of things there's made it might have been a combination of things and and what i'm thinking and again we're going to find out when we when we prep again but I think I got to a point, I was extremely lean um, about that three week mark. I peaked pretty early, which was fine. We tried to hold on to that and it did a good job. The gout really, really took a toll on me because um, I tried everything from a diet standpoint. And um, so I lost some muscle during that time, but I think I was so lean um, that the purines that are in red meat, um, I just think my body just wasn't absorbing those like it was for the first 14 weeks uh -huh. and i just think it was a combination of being five percent body fat and trying to push red meat through my system and it just didn't want it so but we'll find out we've we've learned a lot we experimented and uh we'll do some more of that this time but i think it'll be a much better last three weeks this go around than it was last time yeah absolutely that's uh yeah. that's not a pleasure experience for sure <laughs> no, but i loved it up until the end so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you we went through this you were on stage posing and and uh, how did you feel at that time did you feel any Did you feel good? Uh, did you feel that the mission was accomplished, or you were you still, you know, sure. not very comfortable with everything that was going around? Man, great question. Um, I, I do feel like the mission that I set forward for myself was was accomplished to a degree because um, I wanted to do it, um, regardless of the placing. Right, you just want to do it, regardless. Yes, I wanted to do it. Um, now my mentality is to win, of course. And so I was obviously disappointed I did not win. Um, and I competed in like five different categories, uh, from bodybuilding all the way through the, all the classic physique categories as well. Um, but I had gone through so much those last three weeks, Yuri. I was exhausted. Oh yeah. Just after the first, just after the first um, lineup when I was doing the bodybuilding, the first. I was so dead and so tired. I really didn't have yeah, anything. People don't realize uh, how hard no. it is to keep flexing when you have uh, <laughs> just a little bit of water on your body. You are yes. tired and you have to smile and you have to flex and you have to right. pay attention 
to all the details when you are posing. If you right. flex on your arms, when you don't flex your ha- your your hamstrings, you know something's yes. gonna be missing. So it's it's very tough. That's right. That's right. That, that's the hardest part for me. The diet, eating the foods, the same foods that that was nothing. That was easy for me. Obviously, the working out. I've been doing that my whole life. That was easy for me. The posing, the technicalities of it. Uh, that was the most difficult part of the contest prep for me. And then, you know, show day, it's all a brand new experience for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and Greg was emceeing that. So I couldn't couldn't talk to Greg at all because he's up on stage emceeing. Was this so. uh, Steve Kuko Klask? It was. Okay, it was. Cool. All right, cool. It was, which was a great show. Yeah. And I'll do it again next year. It was a fantastic show. Yeah, I did that show in um, 2017. It's a good experience for sure. It's a good one. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. But, um, but it was all brand new to me from walking in the very first step to registering, getting tanned. Um, How was the experience next... of getting tanned? People sometimes they don't, <laughs> they feel weird. <laughs> unique. <laughs> it was unique. Yeah. I, um, I obviously don't, didn't mind it, not one bit, but it's unique. I mean, I, I've been in locker rooms my whole life, so it, it is what it is. I, it doesn't bother me. But I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. You don't expect a bunch of a boost to be lined up, and then you go stand in front of fans to dry off with other guys <laughs> standing yeah. around, and you know for fifteen minutes. Yeah. But um, but it was unique, and it was all brand new. So I'm just soaking all that in, um, while at the same time trying to figure out, you know, when I'm supposed to go on stage, what I'm supposed to do, uh, what time am I supposed to go, and. But uh, so there's despite just all despite all the pain and, and the struggles, I bet you that as soon as you finish, you're like, I want to do it again. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's uh, it's addicting. Uh, it's addicting. There was never a doubt in my mind. I wanted to take my time and make that decision, and that's what I told people. Um, but but in my own mind, I knew I was going to do it again um, because I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish. Uh, number one, I didn't win. Number two, I I should have felt better on show day than I did. And I was exhausted. I didn't have anything. It, it it got to a point where it was just really even difficult to so, to hold the pose. So you you do feel also that you were flat, not enough fullness. I was flat. I was flat. But a lot of that's just me messing with diet those last few weeks, trying to flush out all the swelling and um, trying not to be in pain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. It'll be a lot different now that we are, you know, in the know about what's going on with my body a little bit more. Um, it'll be a much better experience. I'll have more energy um, than I did last time. And I know you're not going to have much, but it can't be less than what I had because yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. it was bad. I was flat. I was drained. I lost some muscle tissue. Um, and I was I was very aesthetic. I would I'd put my uh, my aesthetic. Um, I guess my aesthetic body, the part of of my body from an aesthetic standpoint, up against anybody that was there. But there, the guys there looked bigger than me mm-hmm. because they were fuller. Talking um, about bigger, which weight division did you go? Well, uh, that's another thing too. So I was supposed to be in class B, which is one ninety seven and below. Um, and for some reason, I was in class C, which is two hundred four. Um, and it wasn't height because I hit the height mark too. So there was a little a little mishap there, but it's no one's fault. But there's just a little mishap there. Yeah, but there. what was your weight but on the day on the on the day of the show? One ninety four. And did you and you when you start the prep? How uh, where where were you? Two sixteen. Oh, so not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I didn't have I did not have much to lose, which is why I I peaked a little early. Um, but uh, and I lost it pretty quickly. Um, but you know, I if I would have brought the physique I had three to four weeks out, as opposed to the one I had on show day, and it's no one's fault except for food. I mean, we did everything that we could. Um, I would have had a little bit different experience, I believe. I would at least felt better, mm-hmm. um, and I looked better too. But um, but it is what it is, and we and we learn. Um, and we step up and we move to the next one. Yeah, look, well, one of the things, and you you play uh, uh, football before and other sports, but one thing about bodybuilding that I always say is that the good thing about uh, competing bodybuilding is that when you finish, even if you don't win, you feel like you accomplished something because you ha- that body is yours. 
No one is going to take it. So that That's physicality, exactly right. that shape that you achieve is going to keep on. You achieve Absolutely. that regardless of the medal. So it's you always win. That's right. You always win. As much That's as, exactly right. Yeah, as much as you won the medal and you win the first place, but at the end of the day, you always win because you are accomplished that uh, transformation, you know. Absolutely. And it's one of those sports where you can see your accomplishments throughout the entire process because you see your physique change, mm -hmm. you see your strength change, whether you're in, a, in an off-season stage or you're in pre-contest or in prep mode, I mean, you see it change and that's rewarding. As long as you put the work in, you'll see it change. And you're exactly right. It's, it's your body and you're going to see the results of what you put into it. So if you work hard at it, you put the put the energy toward it and you do it the correct way you'll see change if you don't you won't it's it's on you the individual yeah so. because there's a lot of people that they also create a, a wrong expectation about competing for the first time i mean a lot of people they want to compete for the first time and they want immediately wants to win well right. it doesn't work like that right because <laughs> there's a lot right. of people that's been preparing for a long time they they Absolutely. try many times i'm not sure which divisions you did you do you probably did novice right because it was your first i did novice um i did the open i did masters um and then on the bodybuilding standpoint i did uh i did the open and I did one more, and I don't remember which one Man, it was. I cannot it's, it's imagine you having to go to stage five times to flex. I think by the by the end, you're like, I'm done. <laughs> I was. I was done. <laughs> I could hardly smile at the end. I was, I was so drained. I was so drained. But it makes for a good story and a great experience, honestly. I, it's, I'm glad I did it because I got the stage experience, and I needed that. Mm -hmm. I really did need that. And that's a whole other thing, too, is when you walk out on stage for the first time um, with several hundred people out there, and you're supposed to show them your body. It's, it's intimidating uh, a little bit. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. And I'm not a stranger to stages, but I'm a stranger to being on stage flexing and showing people my body. Mm -hmm. It's just a different experience. And you don't realize with it really a little truck. out there. <laughs> a absolutely. That's it's, absolutely right. It's I mean, a, you're exposed. Yeah, you're exposed. You are, you are completely vulnerable. You are showing you are. not only your good side, but if, if you have flaws and everyone has flaws, it's, it's there. Yes. You know? It's there and you're there to be critiqued. I mean, it's, that's just the way it is. Exactly. And uh, so it is It is a different experience, and you have to have a different mindset going into it than any of the sports I've ever participated in. So Yeah, they, that, that's one of the, the toughest things that people don't, don't realize. Uh, I practice uh, jiu-jitsu and judo, and I compete on both, uh, but it's different. It's a fight. So right. uh, you fight until the end. Uh, things can change during the fight. Bodybuilding is different. The whole work is done prior to, for you to get to stage. By the time that you get on stage, the hard work was done. I always consider yeah. the show time like a party time. It's like it's time to have yeah. fun because the hard right. work was done. Right, right, absolutely. I agree. I agree, and I'll be able to enjoy that more in December than I did uh, over Memorial Day, just because I have that experience and I know what to expect. I'll have a lot more fun on show day. No. Win or lose. It won't be because of lack of effort, yeah. and it won't be because I didn't have fun. That's for sure. Did you uh, crave any things toward the end? Because a lot of people, when they prep for the first time, when they yeah. mainly when they reach like the the peak week, they are craving sweets, craving things. Uh, did you have any yeah. problem like that? I did not. I did not. Uh, and I don't know if it's because I battled food so much the last few weeks or not. But I did not have those cravings. Uh, not once during the entire process did wow. I have those cravings. Yeah, That's I really just good. Uh, my family we eat fairly clean and healthy anyways, and the diet wasn't really too far off from what I eat anyways. I eat a lot of chicken and I eat a lot of rice anyways, <laughs> um, which is really why I didn't probably have a whole lot to lose in order to get ready for the show, um, at least from a weight and a body fat standpoint. But um, I, I did not. I didn't. The I guess the peanut butter and the rice cakes held me over from a sweet standpoint. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, now you are putting some weight, putting some muscle, I believe. Uh, when are yes. you going to start prepping for December? Um, September. So I'll do twelve weeks this time. Uh, twelve week prep, 
and um, so I've still got a little bit of time to put some muscle back on. I, right now, I'm, I was 214 this morning, um, so I'm hoping to get to 220 or over 220 and then cut down from there by September. So you're going to so. try the same weight division? I think so, yes. Unless I can put on a little bit more weight than that, I'll probably try for the same weight division. Yeah. And on the master, which one was master? What master? Thirty-five and over, or forty and over? This the Kuklo one has uh, only had thirty-five and older, so I did that one. I am forty-two, uh -huh. and so I will do. I think the one in December has a forty-plus division, and I'll do that. Yeah, there are some shows that actually they are very segmented right because they have 40 yeah. to 50 50 to and over you know when right. it's 35 and over i mean the gap is so big because right the reality is and you know that uh after 40 things you start to change a lot and so Absolutely. a physique of someone with 35 mainly when it comes to skin elasticities and things like that is different with right. someone with 45 you know Right. It's absolute truth. Yeah. And you can see it. It's just apparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to have a trained eye to see that. Yeah. So. It, it, it shows. It really shows. And that's Absolutely. why when the gap is too too big, that's why I also like a lot to compete in Oklahoma uh, because mm -hmm. the NPC Oklahoma, they, they do have a, a very well segmented uh, divisions and right Oklahoma is right there. So it's easy right. to, to, to go, you know. It's an easy drive. Yep, and I, I saw a few in Oklahoma, and I may do one or two up there next year. Um, I'm going to do this one in December here in Irving. Um, this one Battle Up Productions puts on, and then um, we'll, we'll see what happens next year. But I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Do you – how you are oh, – actually, how did you do – during that that first prep with cardio since you didn't really have a lot to lose did you do a lot of cardio right. just a little bit i did um starting off i did four days a week i did three days of 20 to 25 minutes steady rate cardio in the morning and then i did a, a high intensity interval training for eight minutes after a after a weightlifting session uh once a week which i did that on saturday um, and then we just kind of kind of altered it depending on how I looked uh, on a weekly basis. So I didn't have to do too much. I, yeah, you are some guys... you are blessed, my friend, because yes. <laughs> I have to do so much cardio that is ridiculous. <laughs> I I am aware that is common. Yes, <laughs> so, and it is uh, cardio is kind of my nemesis. My uh, uh, nemesis. I I do not care for. I was a sprinter in college, and so it's the the powerful explosion movements and this, the long distance stuff or doing it for a while i get bored oh really <laughs> you don't bored. like cardio you don't like cardio at all i don't i can listen to music and listen to an audio book or but i can only do it for so long and i just i have to do something else so <laughs> so i'm fortunate and i didn't have that much to do absolutely so are you trying to keep it uh lean during this bulking phase right now so you don't gain a lot of fat I'm trying to keep it clean, yes. Um, I don't want to gain a whole lot of fat, and my metabolism is still pretty high. It's it's pretty good for a 42-year-old, so I don't have a whole lot to worry about. I'm eating one cheat meal a day. It may go to two um, when I start plateauing on a weight standpoint. But, um, yeah, I don't – I just don't – if I have to do 40 minutes, I'll do it. If I have to do an hour, I'll do it. But if I don't have to, <laughs> I'd like to avoid it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, yes. Um, Besides the food, which was a lesson mm -hmm. learned for you, which you, you're going to get this feedback and incorporate on the next prep, what right. else are you planning to do differently that you sure. identify as weakness? Uh, there is any right. specific body part that you're like, I need to improve yep. this, improve that. Absolutely. Uh, I would, two things. Um, back. My back is, is the weakest body part. And that's just because with the sports that I've played is they're all they've all been so shoulder heavy. Mm. Um, you have to have big, strong shoulders. I've always pulled with my shoulders. I've done everything with my shoulders, and so I have to catch up from a back standpoint. Uh, so I'm working on that. We need more width back there. We need more thickness back there. And so I'm I'm pounding the back. Um, second would be the stage presence and the posing. Um, I just got to get more technical with it. I have to get more comfortable with it. I have to get more fluent with it. And so I'll be doing a lot more 
uh, a lot more posing. I'm assuming that I you're doing some more. some posing class, right? Yes, oh. absolutely. Yeah. Which was great. Um, I just I needed to do more on my own as well, um, and so I will I will certainly implement that uh, at the house. Just getting comfortable with it and holding them, even in the weight room when I'm doing certain movements. Um, implementing the poses while I'm doing those movements uh, will better prepare me for for being on stage. Yeah, the, and maybe the transitions in between uh, absolutely f uh, uh, the mandatory poses is very important. Right, too. absolutely. Because I've seen guys that they were really big, but they were hiding their uh, their muscles basically because yes. they didn't know how to pose. And then there was That's a right. guy that was smaller but he was able to open up completely because he knew how to pull yes absolutely it can make or break you absolutely so i've got to get better in that area too so those two things those are my main areas of emphasis uh, before this next show i'm really working on as far as uh and and of course uh the the food and everything will help with the fullness on stage because you said that you got a little bit flat uh, I did. What about vascularity? Were were you on point on vascularity? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't have any issues there. Yeah, I was on point there. I most everything else from a physique standpoint was there. Um, it, it's other than just size. I needed more size, especially in the back area. Um, my my lats and my back mm -hmm. uh, they killed me, and so it just made me look smaller than I was. And that's okay. We're working on yeah. it. So uh, it is what it is. And I trained for 15 weeks for it. And I have to remember that. Yes. So, it was a very short period for one, for a, a, a sing, uh, first prep, for sure. It is. Now, did you have a lot of support from your family when you decided to do that? Absolutely. They were all on board, uh, which makes it a whole lot easier. So yeah. <laughs> they were all on board. And the good thing is with the, the amount of cardio that I had to do being as little as it was, I, uh, I was able to facilitate my workouts and my cardio time outside of family time. Uh -huh. And so nothing sacrificed from a family standpoint, nothing sacrificed from my business standpoint. So I was able to get everything done like I normally do uh, just in odd hours where my kids were asleep and... Um, so that was nice. Yeah, that's great. That's very, you don't have nice. to compromise family time for sure because that's another that's right. problem that happens when people are going to compete for the first time is they start dropping everything around them, work, family, because they are so focused, right? Right, absolutely. And uh, that's not healthy in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That is not healthy. Not. Uh, unless it's just you and this is, this is your career and what you want. Um, if you've got a family and you have a career already, and it's something that you're wanting to do as a goal, you've got to balance that. Because yeah. it can be easy to get sucked in. Exactly. It can get really easy exactly. to be sucked in. Absolutely, it definitely can. And uh, it, I've seen going sideways for, for many people. Uh, Absolutely. But I'm glad that you were able to keep that balance. It's extremely important. Yeah, it, it, was, it was important to me to do that. And so now I wake up at 4.04 .04 every morning. I have a couple cups of coffee, then I go do my cardio, then I eat. I'd go work out, come back home, see my kids, kiss them goodbye, get ready, go to work, and then my day starts. So I'm up before most people are, but... Um, but you sleep early too. I go to bed about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, That's go to bed about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So you get a, a solid six, seven hours sleep. I try to get at least seven, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, try to get seven. Was the recovery for you also something that you felt you had to do more uh, since you were training more? I'm sorry, is the what? Something the the recovery. Oh, recovery. Um, it was a different style training because it's more focused than I'm used to. Um, so that was a little bit different, but, but not necessarily. So you didn't um, do any type of cryotherapy or anything like specifically to get uh, recovery faster? I, I did cryo maybe twice, um, and one of those times was when I was starting to experience the gout symptoms and didn't know what it was. I went and did some cryo, and um, but from a, a recovery standpoint like that, no. Mm -hmm. I did, um, you know, I went for walks and things after to keep moving to keep the blood flowing, uh, but from, from a cryo standpoint, I got a couple massages also, 
but um, but I felt fine. My body felt okay. My body's pretty used to getting beat up uh, and working out heavy. I've done it for so long. Uh, I didn't have too many issues with that. I do think I'll probably do a little bit more from a massage standpoint just to keep some mobility yes. this time around. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's going to be important, and I won't get as sore after I pose for yeah. an hour um, if I have better mobility, especially in the shoulder areas. And so I'll do some more of that and a little bit more stretching. Um just to open up my shoulders and be more mobile, but um, but recovery wasn't too much of yeah, an issue. Yeah, because I, I I believe that uh, when you when you when you're training uh, for bad for bodybuilding competition, you also get too stiff. So massage also helps on that because yes, otherwise yes. you're gonna be very stiff. Absolutely. Well, I had a massage two days ago. Um, I did about 20 minutes of mobility work this morning after I worked out. It it's taken a little bit more of a, uh, a priority this time around. So yeah, no, I, I think I think December you're gonna kill it, man. You're gonna do so good because you you so. learn yeah. so much. Uh, again, even if you don't win, your experience right. will be tremendously uh, different just because. Right. You're gonna feel more comfortable. You, you you're gonna feel that you belong, right? You're not gonna have the, the issues that you had, so it's gonna be great. Right. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it, and I appreciate that that vote of confidence for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Are you are you working with Greg again on this one? Working with Greg um, and working with Jeff Dwelly the, on the posing oh, yeah. stuff Jeff again. Is great. He's great. Yeah, yeah. he's great. Uh, Greg's great. Um, they're just uh, they're good people. Number one, which is important to me, mm -hmm. I want to work with good people um, that genuinely care about who they're working with. Both of them do, um, but uh, but Greg's great about that. Communicates well uh, and truly does have a concern and care for everybody that he's working with. I think and you so, are in great hands with Greg and Jeff. I both were my coach uh, yeah. in the past, uh, and Jeff is like this mastermind of posing so can he cannot is. go wrong with him he is <laughs> he is. i i wish i could keep up with him but uh, when he when he gets in there and starts working on your routine and you watch him and then then you see yourself do it you're just kind of like man that <laughs> i didn't quite look like that and you just made it up so <laughs> it's amazing it's, a, it's amazing he's good yeah. he's very very good absolutely so yeah I'm, i'm blessed to have those guys definitely standing beside me as i prepare for these things i know that to be true amazing so, steve uh yeah. thank you very much for your time for for uh, taking the time to record this episode appreciate absolutely uh good luck on the prep thank you uh, i'm looking forward to see you on stage again thank you i appreciate that i'm looking forward to being on stage <laughs> all right all right everyone that's a wrap for today's episode thank you very much stay tuned we have much more to come